This right here is my Voron. Which Voron is it? It's uh, it's a Voron. It's a Voron 1.0 actually. And we built this on a live stream from an original Voron kit. So this printer right here is straight out of 2016. It's 12 volts. It's got ramps, DRVs. It even has an E3D Chimera hot end. This thing is, it's old. But we're gonna drag it into the future. And the first part of doing that is upgrading the firmware because while it was revolutionary at the time, Marlin 1.00 release candidate three is a little long in the tooth right now. So why don't we put Clipper on it? And to do that, we're gonna use the same controller board, but we're gonna need something to run Clipper. And this is where I put it. Raspberry Pi. If I had one. Right now, Raspberry Pis, while I personally have some, are kind of hard to come by and quite expensive. So in today's video, we're gonna be setting up Clipper on the Orange Pi Zero Two. So let's get started. Now, while you can source the Orange Pi in different flavors from various vendors, we're gonna be using a kit from Triangle Labs and the Orange Pi Zero Two that I got right here. And I'll have this linked in the description below. So what do we get with this kit? Well, first off, we have the Orange Pi Zero Two. On that, we have a all winner ARM processor, an H616. We have one gigabyte of RAM. For connections, we have Ethernet, USB-C, micro HDMI, a single USB port. We have Wi-Fi along with an included antenna. GPIO, we have an expansion header here, and it does come with this expansion board here. So when you attach this, you add two additional USB ports along with a audio output, mic and IR adapter. You're probably gonna be most interested though in the additional USB ports. If you plan on connecting this to a printer via USB and you wanna run something like a USB webcam or you're connecting via multiple MCUs, you're gonna want those additional USB ports. However, this kit, while it does come with a heat sink, if you are using this expansion board, the heat sink is too tall and you're not gonna be able to use it. So I did a little digging in my spare parts drawer and found a compatible heat sink I'll be using. On the bottom, we do have an SD card slot and the kit does come with a 32 gigabyte SD card. It is labeled SanDisk and judging from the packaging here and the fact that it was already opened, I don't know how much I trust it, but we're gonna use it anyways and see how it goes. We also have a USB-A to USB-C cable and to power things, the kit comes with a buck converter here. So it comes with this wire pre-attached, pre-soldered. So in theory, you shouldn't have to solder anything with this, you just plug in your USB power your device and this runs off of anywhere from 6 to 26 volts and outputs 5.2 volts at 3 amps so this will be more than sufficient to power the orange pi zero two so let's go take our sd card to the computer and go and get everything installed and set up now while some of the pi alternatives may be as powerful or near as powerful as an off-the-shelf raspberry pi and certainly powerful enough to run clipper using something like mainsail or fluid the big advantage comes down to software when you're using something like a raspberry pi odds are there's a pre-made image that you just flash to an sd card and you're ready to go when you're using something like an orange pi zero two or many of the other other Raspberry Pi alternatives, odds are you're gonna be building things from scratch. So what we're gonna to have to do is install an operating system to this first, and then we're gonna SSH into it and set everything up to run Clipper, and we're gonna use Kiao to help out with that. So on the listing here from Triangle Lab on the store page, they do have a link here that will take you to a set of instructions on how to get everything set up. So if you wanna follow along at home, uh, just in case things change in the future, the problem with videos, videos are a product of the time. Things change over time, who knows? We might get a pre-made image for this in the future, but for now, we're following the current as of now instructions. So always check references just in case things change. And according to this, the first thing we're gonna have to do is install an operating system on this. So since this is an Orange Pi 02, we're gonna install a version of Armbian created by the Orange Pi team. And this is the version right here that you're gonna want. It's the Bullseye Server Linux version. So we're gonna go ahead and download that. And after that's done, you're gonna have to extract that file, select it. I'm using Balana Etcher here to flash the SD card. We're gonna install our SD card into our computer here. We are going to select it and we are going to flash it. This may take a couple minutes, let it do its thing. So after it's done flashing, you take the SD card out of the computer, make sure you eject it first so you don't accidentally corrupt it. And this part is kind of annoying. So there's no Wi-Fi set up on this out of the box. So what I've done is I plugged it into a wall wart here just for power, and I've connected it to my router via ethernet. Now you can still do all of this remotely. So if you have to go over to wherever your router is in your house and plug it in right there and power it with a wall wart, you can. Once you get Wi-Fi set up, you can move it to wherever you want in the house. If you do plan on 
on running this off of ethernet right away, you can skip the whole setting up Wi-Fi steps that we're gonna go through right now. So I've gone into my router's interface. I found out what IP address my Orange Pi Zero is, and now we're gonna have to connect to it. So I'm running Windows here, so you can SSH into it just using the command prompt. Uh, if you wanna use another tool like Putty, you can. And the command is just SSH, and the login is Orange Pi at whatever the IP address of it is. Hit enter. And then the password itself is also orange pie by default. You go ahead and change your password in the future if you wish. I'm gonna leave it default for now. And then once we're connected here, uh, we're gonna need to enable serial port access. So we're gonna, just gonna run this command right here. Re-input your password. And that is done. Now the guide does have a few more commands here. It recommends we run. So we're gonna go ahead, set that up right now. And then like with most things with Clipper, we're going to go ahead and do some updates before we move into the final setup. So sudo app get update and then sudo app get upgrade. Boom. So that may take a while, but now everything is up to date. And if you do plan on running Wi-Fi, we're going to go ahead and set up the Wi-Fi now. So you're going to run sudo orange pie dash config, go down to network, select Wi-Fi. And then you're gonna look for the network you're going to be connecting to. Put in your password for it. Okay, it should connect. Then, then you can escape from that. And then you can run the command sudo if config and we can see right here uh, what IP address we are connected here over Wi-Fi, and everything appears to be set up. So at this point, if you want, you can go ahead, disconnect your Orange Pi Zero from your ethernet, install it into your printer. But since this printer is already set up, I've already had Clipper running on this machine before. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it connected for now over ethernet, and we're just gonna go right into setting up Kiao. While the instructions on this webpage here for Kiao, I think could use a little bit of an update. If you know what you're doing uh, before you get into it, it isn't too bad. So first off, we need to ensure that we have an operating system installed on our device, which we've just taken care of here. And like a lot of Clipper stuff, uh, we're gonna be doing some copying and pasting here. So again, SSH into it. If you've disconnected and reconnected, um, you can do this over Wi-Fi now. We've had that set up. And the first thing we're gonna run is this sudo app get install git command. And then we need to change directories here. Git clone. And then Kiao script. I think it's a script. There we go. So now we have Kiao ready to go. So we need to install stuff. So we'll select one, install. And we are going to go down the list here. So the first thing we're gonna have to install is Clipper. So one, it's like Python version. We're gonna wanna use uh, 3.x. So one again, and how many instances? So if you plan on running multiple printers off of the same device, this is where you would select. But since we're only running one, we're just gonna leave it at one. And we're gonna let that go. This may take a little bit of time. Now, once that is done, and that one does take a while, unfortunately, uh, we're gonna go ahead and install the API, which is Moonraker now. So we're gonna select two, install Moonraker, yes. And let that run. That one doesn't take as long, luckily. Okay, so now we're ready to select our interface. Our two options here are mainsail or fluid. Uh, because this was already set up with mainsail, we're gonna keep with that. So select number three, and you guessed it, let that one run. Uh, at one point it will ask you about macros, just select yes. And at this point, you're pretty much ready to go. Now, if you are running things like Clipper screen, uh, you can go ahead and set that up now, Octoprint, some other options like Obico. Um, I am gonna install Crow's Nest here for the webcam. 
So once you're done installing everything you want to install, you're probably going to want to go ahead and reboot the device. And as you can see right now, we're no longer on Ethernet. I just have it again powered by the wall wart, but we are connected to it over Wi-Fi. And here you can see the mainsail interface. So obviously uh, it's going to error out because we don't have it connected to a printer right now. So I'm going to go ahead and install this on my Voron 1.0 here. So I'm not going to cover how to actually set up your specific printer. I've covered that in the past and I'll link a video at the end of this video on how to do that. Uh, but you're going to want to go ahead, install Clipper on your MCU, bring in a config for the printer itself. And that part will be the same as any other Clipper install. So I'm just going to go ahead, install this on my printer now, import the config and get this thing moving. Now, hopefully, we have movement. So we've got Clipper installed on the Orange Pi Zero. It's connected to our printer and we are good to go. So that's the first step of bringing this printer to the modern age. We now have an up-to-date current firmware telling this machine how to move. And guess what? Even though this thing's from 2016 with Clipper, it can boogie, but having fast software running your printer isn't everything. So while this thing can now boogie pretty fast, now that we have Clipper installed with it, um, the fact that it's got a standard flow hot end, the extruders are pretty much straight out of 2016. It, it's, it's still lacking in a few areas. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel because in the future, we're gonna be going direct feed with high flow on this, as well as upgrading some fans to see really how much of a printer you really need to print fast. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. If you wanna help support the channel, the content I create and the things I do, links in the description as well. Cheers.